Welcome to the Chasing Ebenezer Show. This is a show where we talk about stuff, play you some music, and encourage you to be creative. This season, we are exploring the art of being human. We want to say thank you to our patrons who support us each month. If you want to know more about that, visit us on patreon.com backslash Chasing Ebenezer. For more information about our musical endeavors, visit ChasingEbenezer.com. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Chasing Ebenezer show. I am Benjamin, and this is my beautiful, 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 beautiful friend and wife, Heidi. I'm laughing because someone called me a frenemy a few minutes ago. <laughs> I, I said it jokingly and I didn't appreciate she it. She didn't like that too much. So I am since we're talking about enemies today, I wanted to make sure to be really clear that you are not my enemy. We'll see about that. <laughs> hey, speaking of not our enemies, we want hey. to say thank you to our patrons who have been supporting us each month. We love you and we are grateful that to know that we have friends it's a good thing it's a really really good thing so anyway what are you excited about now well i'm excited because this episode i got to share my love of ice coffee with you i didn't have another goblet that's all right you you, 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 sorry you you, you didn't have a goblet this time but um doesn't quite make the same sound yours does no, 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 you know, you know, given, given your history with spilling. Apparently I spill a lot. She spills a lot. And it's one of the many things I love about you. Is it's, it? I, it? Or is. is it one of the things that makes it seem like I'm your enemy? No, no, it, it, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. You're the only person I know that thinks air is a coaster. Everything has the opportunity to be a coaster. <laughs> That's my opinion. Anyway, I'm sorry I distracted you. Is there something you're excited about other yeah, than I the am. iced coffee? I'm excited uh, about going into the woods for three days by myself. You're just going to walk into the woods? I am just going to go in you're there. You're just going to walk out? No, you very nicely got me a tiny house oh, Airbnb for three oh, days. Oh, that sounds like a really nice thing that yeah, I did for you. I get to go on a little private retreat and I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Hopefully it doesn't rain and hopefully it's not ridiculously hot. Those are the two things I'm hoping wow, for. Wow, you seem like you have a lot of requirements. I have a lot of requirements, but we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to that. You're welcome. Yeah. What are you excited about? I said I was excited oh, that were, I was oh. able to share my love of iced ah, coffee with you. I got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Pay attention, pal. Pay attention. Apparently I'm forgetting things, so yeah. What? How did you feel your humanity? Well, I just hit my elbow. You sure did. It hurt really bad. I felt and it. And that didn't feel very nice. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, you should be so sorry. And then I spilled your coffee all over the freezer. <laughs> yes, you uh, did. And so, you know, it, I don't go very long before, you know, being aware of my humanity. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I've had some technical difficulties with my computer today, and I am finding, and I've said this before, when things don't work, I don't work. That's what happens. When things break, I break. So I've been having a hard time with that today. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's us. That's us. So last week we talked about friendship and creativity, so this week we're going to talk about... Enemies, Enemies and, creativity. and creativity. All right, here we go. I'm gonna let Ben go first here in his, in his. And as an adult, I regret this, but oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, is I'm this gonna, gonna be a really? It's, it's gonna be a real story. sad story. So, so I talked last week about how one of my very first best friends I made was on a playground 
And unfortunately, one of the first enemies I, uh, I made was on the playground, was too. Was your enemy you? No, my enemy was actually, we started out as friends. <gasps> oh, no. And we were playing a game. Oh, no. We were playing a war game. Oh. And I found that imagining games can get you close to somebody, and apparently it can also make you not. And so we were playing a game, and all of a sudden, we started getting in an argument. And he said, well, why don't we just be friends? And I said, no, I'd rather us be enemies. What? And what started... Why? The, I, I Do think you love turkey? I know. I think I watched way too many action things as a kid uh, and was too into the wanted, whole superhero. Did wanted, you want like a nemesis? You wanted a nemesis? Ah. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and so what started was that a year long of like I'm not bullying, you. I'm not uh, you know, he did that to me oh. and I think I was bad to him too in oh. hindsight. And, oh. I'm so yeah, like, I feel, like I feel I'm bad watching, for that. I feel like I'm watching the Banshees of Anishra. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad, and uh, yeah, I, I regret oh. it. But that was that was uh, oh. yeah. I'm sure we've all it done started with like the decision. That. You made the decision that you needed a nemesis. Yeah, oh. which I think is pretty messed up now that I think about well, it. But we all do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So that was my story. Which oh. yours? Well, I didn't. I just remember. <laughs> I was one of those little girls in school who was just like the tattletale, like, especially with the boys, with any of the boys who were, I thought were being mean or, you I know. I believe it. I believe it. Look, I'm not proud of it, okay? But I, I, man, I'm like, gotta go tell the teacher, go tell the principal. Oh, so I don't know. I just, I just, I didn't realize how much of a drama queen I was till... Well, maybe last last few uh, decade or so, I realized, wow, I'm such a drama queen. But no. I just didn't like to be teased or picked, like poked or so. Yeah, I do remember though. I really enjoyed. Um, speaking of Nemesis, my my sister and I like one of our favorite favorite shows when we were kids was the you know the old Batman TV show. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. We loved it and and get smart. Those two shows, the villains were so so over yeah. the top colorful, but it was so clear good guy, bad guy. Yep. And you're in one category or the other. And of course I always identify with the good guy. Well, yeah. Because I must be the good, the, the hero of my story. Hmm. So I think that that definitely was very, very formative. You were watching like Rambo and and all these, and we were watching Batman and Get Smart. So you know. Well, you know. Well, but like I think the first enemies I remember on TV. I remember uh, Darth Vader, of course. Of course. I grew up on Star Wars and Lex Luthor. And oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and by Lex Luthor, I mean like... You mean like Gene Hackman. I mean Gene Hackman. Oh, yeah, that was my first Superman exposure ever. I yeah. remember, well, and I think I saw, saw him as a cartoon before, so I knew Lex Luthor was... Um, Bald? Yeah, so when I saw Gene Hackman at first, I'm like, he's got hair. Oh, because he's, he's got hair. Oh, yeah, the and wings, And then, yeah. spoiler alert... <laughs> He didn't really have oh, hair. Wigs. He wigs. was wearing a wig. Oh, and there you go. Now and you, yeah, you get it. You want a wig? No. Okay. Lex Luthor did not inspire my haircut. Um, losing my hair did. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it about us that feels like this need or this awareness to have an enemy? I mean, it's not that as an adult... It, Especially, it's not that I want an enemy. Right. But I think that um, we are very, as humans, we tend to categorize things. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to think of ourselves as the bad guy. We want to be the good guy. And so it's just, it's just so easy. You're either a good guy or you're a bad guy. One or the other. One or the other. And so if someone doesn't line up with our worldview or whatever, then, well, they're bad because I'm good. <laughs> So I think that's just part of who we are is we just we just want to put people into these little classifications. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at how um, a lot of the arts have have maybe in the last 10, 20 years, oftentimes storytelling, you can kind of see we kind of went from good, bad, 
to complicate it. Yeah, that's true. Because that's really at true. the end of the day, we all have good and all we all have bad in us. Like, depends on the moment, depends on the day, what's coming out. And so I think that a lot of storytelling more more reflects humanity, actually, mm-hmm. than maybe maybe the things storytelling from when we were really little. Yeah. And I think as you grow as an adult too, you, you can understand the complexities too of, of humanity. Well, I think about like in comic book movies. Okay. Like think back to Batman. When oh, you like were originally a kid. and then how they originally, just kind of evolved. Yeah. Honestly, I, the thing that I like about comic book movies now are the villains. If they're, if they're oh. done well, if they're done well, if they're done in a place where you understand why they are the way they are versus like, they're, they're just bad. bad. They're bad. You know, I, I really resonate with that and I get fascinated by it. And that, and I even think back to like Darth Vader, Darth Vader in 1977, uh-huh, right, 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 to Darth Vader now. And you see all of the, like they had a whole series of Star Wars movies just to explain why Darth Vader was the way he was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we, we're, we're, we're moving to wanting to understand the humanity of even the darkest person we can imagine. And, I, and, and on some level, I think that's a good thing. Because it kind of helps us not see ourselves in such a pretty picture. <laughs> well, because we do one or the other. We either, like, hate ourselves, but oftentimes we mm-hmm. don't, we're not consciously aware of that. Right. We are kind of stuffing that under bravado or all these other things. So... We're not, yeah, we're just not always aware of it. But I think that whether you want to call it the anti hero or, or, or whatever you want to call it, by understanding a person's behavior, it doesn't mean we're excusing behavior, it doesn't right. mean we're saying this is okay, but I think we can be more compassionate, more forgiving. And when we learn to embrace those things about ourselves, that's when we can actually love better. Because I'm mo- most. Most of us have heard Jesus' words, love your neighbor as yourself. And if you don't have any love for yourself or you can't accept grace, then it's going to be very difficult to do it for some right. for someone else. So when that person in traffic cuts you off and almost kills you because they're speeding and they didn't signal. So they're the enemy for you now? <laughs> I mean, they're, they shouldn't be. <laughs> hmm. But like, if that's the only interaction I ever have with that individual, yeah. I can be like, what an idiot! But that's probably a person who has a family and people who love them. That so it's that just, they're in a hurry to get they're home in a to. hurry to get home to. Yeah. Just signal next time and don't cut me off. <laughs>
Yeah. Where if someone thinks one thing is right and the other is wrong, then all of a sudden it's no longer about the issue. It's, well, I hate you. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's, that's bad. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and hmm. so I'm just, yeah. And I think that part of adulthood, I really had this awesome opinion of myself. 20 years ago. I still think you're awesome, by the way. Thank you. And now I almost have the opposite. Like, oh, I suck. I suck. <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of like, rather than viewing everyone else as the problem, mm -hmm. then I almost view myself as, I'm the problem with everything. But it's like, okay, <laughs> sometimes I'm the problem, sometimes I'm not, and vice versa. Sometimes you're the problem, sometimes I'm not. But when we can... <laughs> Sometimes we're the problem. Sometimes we. <laughs> so the more and more that I learn to accept grace mm -hmm. and compassion and release shame, the more I can love better That's myself good. and other people. And then it, 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 it becomes less about who's who's, who's right and who's, who's wrong. right and who's wrong yeah. and. But anyway, I yeah. think y'all you'll, you'll get it. You'll fit. You got. You'll. You can. You. You. If you've listened to me for more than seven seconds, you figured out how to figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm still processing. If someone gets in the way of what I want, do I treat them as an enemy? Maybe in your. Maybe that's, it can be just in our big. mind too. It could yeah. just be mentally. But then, do we let little things build up and build up and build up and right. over time, right. and we haven't really flushed those out, and then hmm. you grow further and further apart, or you build up these. Yeah. Babies. Or yeah, yeah. That's I don't um, know. So it's let me let me let me let me uh move the conversation a little bit. Move it. To how does having an enemy help creativity? So you think it probably does. I well, no, I'm not saying it should. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well um uh Sometimes it can help you to have this, I'll show them. <laughs> like so-and-so doesn't think I can do that or criticize my thing. I'm going to do better. I'm not saying. <laughs> I mean, how many breakup songs have been written uh, like yeah, slamming yeah, an ex? Yeah, right, right, right. right. So uh, sometimes it can start out with the wrong, like that motive. I'll show you. But it can fuel you to, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. To yeah. work hard to, to accomplish something. So it's good if there can be some resolve of forgiveness and all sure. that in there. But yeah, it can. Well, you think about the 60s, how much protest music came sure. out in the 60s. You think about yeah. like whole yeah, genres sure. of music have been devoted to resisting the system. Sure, right? sure. And, that, and because there are some, there yeah, is there are, real evil in the yes, world. Absolutely, so I, absolutely. it's not to say that there's no real evil. Oh, Let's no, all no, just no. be friends. No, there is. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I know for me, okay, so as someone who doesn't like explode in their anger and has difficulty expressing anger, mm -hmm. I came to music with a way of being able to express things I didn't like mm, Yeah. in a way that didn't feel like I was starting a war. That is a good, good thing. Right? Yes. So, so I do think that sometimes being against something or being bothered by something, being hurt by something can have a creative spark, but that yes, can't be yes. the only thing that drives it. So where does having an enemy hurt creativity? Well, it, it, if you've ever been criticized before, then you can just, you can just shut down. You shut down, yeah. Get mm -hmm. paralysis, creative paralysis. So yeah, that's happened many times. Hmm. Yeah, Get, being in front of people. I don't really like being in front of people, really. It's Which is so thing. funny because that's what we do. I'm like, why do I do this? And We're doing it case, right now. And so if there's like someone in the audience or, or whatever that maybe there's been some words said or whatever, then I can so get in my head and then I start thinking about it too much and then I screw up a lot. Or if you have someone in the audience who may not even be thinking about you, but they're glaring at you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes we don't even know we're glaring. Like, so, am yeah. I glaring right now? I don't know. I'm not looking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, and I think that sometimes we can we can be our own enemy in that oh, way. Oh, uh, yeah. 
you know, self-sabotage, that whole, of course, that whole, absolutely. We, we have critics outside, but we also have inner critics that are like judging our work and, you know, projecting things on other people and not good. The other thing that can happen is that you can become so known for what you're against. True. That, that like if your whole art niche is about being against something, then you always are having to find something else to be against. And that's just perpetually negative. <laughs> I've been really trying. Okay, so a lot of my songs are in minor keys, as you've probably observed listening to us over the years. I I'm not trying to like get out of that, but I am trying to move to some more positive things when I write music these days. I think having being a balance of of joy and sorrow yeah. is important. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. that you're really not being fake and ha- no. you know not saying oh I just must be I have to write happy stuff, but I think that. Yes, having a balance of that and is is good, is healthy. Yes. So, other than like go try to make an enemy, what's a creative prompt? We're not recommending that. We're not recommending that. that. That was a joke. <laughs> what a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed. You know it's not a good joke when someone says, I laughed. That's bad. I don't know why I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm laughing. And it wasn't that funny. Uh, I, yeah, I know. But it just made, I, know, I agree. I agree. It wasn't that funny, but it just made me laugh. Uh, it doesn't take much for me to laugh. It's, we all know that. Uh, what was... Oh, oh, what, what was the... What prompt. Was the, the prompt. Oh, the prompt. So much has happened since then. So much has happened. <laughs> I think that journaling too about what is an enemy um, and really identifying if there are individuals who are viewing, you are viewing as enemies versus mm-hmm. like there's evil in the world. Absolutely. So kind of just spending some time to just like what are the things right now that come to mind can just kind of help um get some of that out there because sometimes we don't even know how bothered we are by things mm-hmm. or who's bothering us and then it can come out in a in an unhealthy burst um so i think just spending some time journaling would be really important yeah. and um do you have some this, this beetle I bug do. thing is just so loud uh you know i was and this might be risky but oh let's hear it i want to hear risky because issues like if you're a, if you're against like issues make us uncomfortable, right? So they can stir up feelings and then sometimes because that issue makes you uncomfortable, the person who is holding that opinion you then begin to dislike. Yes. Right? Yes. So what would happen if you actually hung out with somebody that thought differently with you on a particular issue and rather than having a debate and rather than having to agree Asking them why they believe that and like how they came to that conclusion and seek to understand before seeking to win an argument. That might be risky, but it could be really, really good. It could be. And it, and it may not be that you have to have a conversation like, hey, let's go talk about an issue that we don't agree on. <laughs> If you hang out with people long enough, an issue is going to come up that you don't agree on. And when that happens... Rather than putting on your boxing gloves, put on your little listening ears and really try to understand where they're coming from. I loved how you just demonstrated that. Yeah. <laughs> I liked your listening ears. My listening. Your little listening ears. Maybe this is what we need to do to an argument. You oh know, no! Don't do that, ever bro. do that again. Don't ever do that if you win an argument. Uh, well, and. That's why um, when Jesus said to love your enemies, it was, it's just such a radical idea. Yeah. And so that can be, maybe that would be a good journaling thing too. What is the difference between enabling and overlooking it, like something that is causing pain versus how you, you how can you love someone even if you're viewing them as an enemy? Mm-hmm. It, and it's going to be different for every single person, sure. every single issue. Um but just kind of just spending some time. What what is what do those words uh, cause to rise up in you? Mm. Do you do you like that idea? Do you not like that idea? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, you could create... Download a laugh track app on your phone. And next time you're in a conversation with somebody that you consider an enemy and they say something that bothers you, push the laugh track and see if that diffuses the situation. It might. It might do the opposite. It's true. We'll let you decide let if it's a know. good idea or not. Get it on video. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I derailed. You know what? It's okay. I'm going to put on my listening ears. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I think that there's so many ideas. There's there's movies and books you could watch about enemies or people who like shift and become friends. I mean, there's just so many things. Mm -hmm. um, you could create an art piece uh, based on an issue, and maybe that would help you. It doesn't necessarily to be something you have to share with share. Yeah. But it can be helpful, whether it's a poem or a song. Or a little dance. All right. Well, speaking of songs, what song are we doing for this one? I don't remember. What did you say? I forgot. What? What? Is it Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do a little old song for you. <laughs> I forgot. You were like whispering it like what? Yeah, well, I was trying to have a private meeting <laughs> while we were videoing. So... We're going to do an oldie. It's definite oldie. It's definite oldie. It's like 1800s oldie. We're going to do a little drunken sailor here. Yep. And there's so many verses. So, uh, I don't know. There's some pretty mean verses. Mm -hmm. There's some pretty mean verses. So, are we... Uh... Maybe you can come up with your own verse. <laughs> maybe. To drunken sailor and yeah, share it. Because it's pretty easy to write verse. verses to this. Yes. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe just think it through. What what you would do? Because what would you do? Because it's an important question. It is. It is. Because one might view a drunken sailor as an enemy. Yes. So we'll just let you enjoy what we do here for you. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you soon and have a good rest of your week. Sailor, what do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises early in the morning. Ooh. Sober, put him in a long boat till he's sober early in the morning. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises early in the morning. Ooh. Black pot of coffee, make him a big black pot of coffee, make him a big black pot of coffee early in the morning. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises early in the morning. Hooray.
do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Early 